that one belief eliminated from your brain can change the course of your reality. Would you want that? It's not for everyone, only the brave. Those who want to own their life like the powerful leaders they were born to be. A pivotal moment can change everything. Now, here is the host of Crossroads to Awakening show, Wendy Paquette. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. This is a Crossroads to Awakening. I am Wendy Paquette, your host for the day. And today we're talking about something that I find really fascinating. It goes so deep. And yeah, there are words we fling around all the time. And it's the difference between free and freedom. Crazy, crazy show. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am a holographic mind reprogrammer. I help humans stuck at their crossroads awaken to their true selves and change the world from where they stand. Because I believe as a high frequency human, how you see reality is 100% a reflection of all the programs that have been etched into your brain and those programs can easily be shifted. So this is the space where you can get a hold of a new perspective and potentially see your reality differently right here, right now. So let's get started. So the difference between free and freedom. I mean, it feels like something that humanity has been really, really longing for, right? What is free? And what is freedom? And they sound like a very similar thing because one word is embedded in the other. And when I was meditating on it today, I got so many layers of depth of programs that we have been living into for so long that it was a never ending like rabbit hole of stuff. And so we're going to dive into what that looks like in your reality and how identifying what comes up for you when you think about something which is free versus something where you say freedom, because usually freedom is something that people are after. It's an experience that most humans would like to have in their reality, right? Who doesn't want to experience freedom? And what does that really mean to you? So uh, let's dive into free first. So what came up for me, which is really interesting. So over the course of the show, what we're going to do is just dive in and, and just so that you're all following along with me, What happens when I go into these shows is I reach out into the ethers of the energies of the multiverse and I access some information and wisdom from the other worlds that we can't see with our eyes, but we have access to every single one of us. And I pull through information that supports me in understanding something and you uh, to understand it the way I deliver it. So if you're listening to this show, know that I've got you and there's a language that I lend that most likely resonates with you. So you get to listen in to hear your little part so that you can experience your world differently as well. So what I'm calling in now is the difference between with free and freedom, because I feel this, the experience like being in Canada, the experience I have as a Canadian, witnessing my friends in America right before their election is so fascinating. Fascinating to see where everybody's at, what's happening. There's joy in certain areas because they have the freedom to choose freedom. Notice the words. There's frustration in other areas because they feel like they don't, they aren't free to choose. Like they don't have a clear choice or a valid choice. Now, I definitely am not speaking into the aspect of politics because I know nothing about it. And I do seem to feel like I know a lot about humans themselves. So this is the aspect where I'm leaning into. In order to identify where you sit, like we're looking at the programs, right? This is where the show's at. These are the crossroads that you get to come into in your reality. We're going to identify your programs based on some words, right? Simple words. So today I chose free and freedom because those were the words that I woke up with thinking about today. Like, what does that really mean to to either be free or desire freedom or want to experience freedom? Or when you're looking at a physical item, it being free, like having a value or a cost to it. So there were so many iterations of what free meant that I literally was writing them down in the bathtub so that I could not forget them, not not lose sight of how many programs are embedded into my brain that I have created and chosen to live by in this reality when it comes to free. So let's look at free as an item. 
Okay, so let's dive into that. Free as an item, when I, um, I utilized my husband as my sounding board this morning, and I was like, what do you think, what comes up for you when I say, hey, uh, this thing is free? And then I changed my thought. I go, okay, a neighbor. Say, I try to give a visual. My neighbor, let's say he's going to give away his lawnmower for free, and he's going to give it to you. What comes up for you when you, when you, you know, find out that he's going to give away his lawnmower for free? And he said, well, what comes up first is thank you. And then um, like, okay, like I, thank you. I'll take it kind of thing. And then he went on to say, yeah, that's how I usually am. If somebody's going to give me something for free and I know them. So in my sphere of knowing and having a relationship with someone, I don't really question it. I go, I feel like if they're going to give me something for free, then it's a, you know, a value and I'm open to receive it. And I was like, okay, that's like, I didn't even break it down into those places. What happens if it's someone that you don't know and they want to give you something for free? Then what? And he said, well, it's a whole different story then. Because then I'm wondering, why would he be giving me something for free? He doesn't even know me. Who does that? I was a little in like, oh, okay, this is where the good stuff is, right? This is where the programs come. Because what would make it different? human next that lives next door. We know him because they live next door. And human say that lives down the street that we don't know. Maybe he lives in the same town. What's the difference when he wants to give you something for free and you don't have a relationship or a connection that you realize in that moment that isn't as close as the neighbor next door? All of a sudden, all these crazy programs show up like, why is he getting rid of it? What does he want from me? Um, that maybe something's wrong with it, like what's wrong with it, all these crazy thoughts started coming about, all because of the word free, with an item, attached to an item, a physical thing. Now, you would think that that sounds silly that we would look at it from that perspective, but if you want to see your programs, how you are one way is how you are always. So, if he has a program, I'm speaking into my husband because I used him as my experiment this morning, if his program says someone that I know, like, and trust because he's a neighbor, gives me something for free, then I will receive it, right? Um, and that's one program. So imagine your whole life, anyone that you know, that you have a relationship with, you would receive something for free, easy. The, the rest of the world still exists. Now you're talking like outside of your bubble, which we can look at our city or province or country or state or whatever that looks like outside the bubble's massive right your bubble is as big as you allow it to be with your friends neighbors and relatives outside of the bubbles where all the stuff's happening right so if one of us isn't willing to receive something for free without like at least three to six programs coming up the state of our world is it gets to really be looked at from a different space. I mean, I, I literally created a mind crunch for myself in looking at this because I didn't realize how many layers that we go through as humans when we're connecting to someone outside of our bubble, right? When we're connecting to someone outside of our sphere of who we know and are connected to, like and trust for that matter. And what I noticed is that we're so unwilling to just experience the freedom of wanting to trust someone outside of our sphere for any, any given reason. There are layers that they get to go through in order for us to create a connection in order to experience the situation or uh, them differently. So how do we look at those programs and change them so that our world gets to be in the space of freedom, right? So I'm gonna link those two words together, back and forth. I hope you can follow me on this one. So that was my experience of the word free attached to an item. When I said, what comes up for you, when I say the word free, he said, be free. Like humans want to, people want to be free. I'd like to be free, which is, is a way of being. Nothing else came out of that. It wasn't attached to anything else. So follow along with me now. It's a matter of something being attached to the word in order to give it meaning, right? So if I'm saying, okay, our neighbor is going to give away a free lawnmower, lawnmower is attached to it. 
and no other real thoughts in that, oh, that's kind, he's giving it away. A stranger is going to give away a lawnmower and he's like, hey, I'm done with this. I don't need it anymore. I'm just going to give it away. All kinds of programs come up. Like, why would he do that? He doesn't really know me. I don't have a connection with them. What's really wrong with that thing? What does he want from me? Like all these other programs come up. No space of freedom, right? We're living in a space where that freedom doesn't allow us to just say, yeah, wow, thanks, man. The same response you would have to a neighbor. <sighs> so imagine I am, we're looking at our kids now, right? And our kids don't feel free to play out down the street when they're, you know, in the, their younger ages without someone with them, without a whole bunch of friends with them. They're not free to roam in the neighborhood because of all the points of view that we have now about people we don't know. Right, so now we're looking at, okay, neighbors that we, now we talk about neighbors being close to us like right next door, like literally a door or two outside of us. And you can hear my dog barking in the background. And now we're talking about neighbors who live like five, six, seven to 10 to 14 houses down. And we're now disconnected from those neighbors in the sense that we don't know them. They're not in our bubble. How small is your freedom space becoming because of all these programs that we're holding? This, this to me feels like a really heavy topic because the state of our world for a lot of people is very volatile right now. And we have created this world to be what it is based on how we live in our life. So if we're looking at our bubble being so small as the neighbors that are just around us, what does that say about the rest of our experience and our reality, right? For our community, for connection across our town or our city really leaves a very small window to what's possible. So I know I've been leaning back and forth. I'm, I'm sourcing a, an easy way to explain this in a way that we can see ourselves from such a clear space that when we ask one simple question, right, of ourselves, we can see where our minds immediately go. And I, I feel like it's more, it's heavier than I ever imagined it to be. And a part of me feels responsible because being source, which we all have the opportunity to claim and be responsible as, I have claimed that space of smallness where my bubble is small, right? Because if I'm seeing it out in the world and I'm experiencing it from uh, those around me, then I'm buying that same point of view and it's being reflected back to me. So that's where the free comes from. And we'll dive deeper into that because I was getting um, free as in there's free and then there's pay nothing for it. So we're talking into like, when you go to buy something, everybody's looking for a deal, right? So what comes up for you when I say, hey, I've got a whole bunch of things for sale. And you know what? I'm not gonna sell them anymore. I'm gonna call them free. Would you still want them, right? All of a sudden there's a value placed on um, an object or something that now, if it's free, does it have no value, right? So I've been, I've kind of been all over the place with the word free and it, it's a, a, part of it is a deliberate aspect in order to confuse your mind into seeing how we see our world from one word. One word that can change the way we see everything is the word free. And it is the crux of our monetary system where we attach value, how we make that monetary system fit our relationships and how we see the world while we value others with a word which is free. So if something's free, it has no value anymore because if you're not willing to place a price tag on it, it clearly doesn't have any value. Yet we're shopping out in the world and would like nothing else but to have something that has a sale tag. It's been reduced in cost, a lesser value on the dollar sign and even better if it were free so i am going somewhere with this this is created to show you that where we have our value systems and where we are living from right now gets to shift so rapidly that we explode free into freedom 
and I'm going to show you that next because I know we're sliding into a break. It was a really heavy first few minutes into the show and we get to have the freedom on the other side of this frequency of free because we're going to turn that sucker into freedom. So Jen, let's hop into our commercial now and we will be right back. You're listening to Crossroads to Awakening show on the Inspired Choices Network. We are going to be inspiring. We will be right back with all that inspiration. See you in a minute. If you could wave a magic wand and have your life be anything you wanted it to be, what would it look like? Professional dancer, CEO of a multi-million dollar earth conscious company, a screenwriter with top billing shows, and ultimately have the boldness to move about the world without emotional blocks standing in your way, therefore having the confidence to achieve anything you put your mind to. That's what Wendy Pocket knows is possible for you. The first step is understanding why you don't believe it too, or why you do, and yet haven't created it. Put on your possibility goggles and join Wendy now, because you're at the crossroads to awakening. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. the Crossroads to Awakening show with your host, Wendy Paquette. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Now back to the program. Okay, so, you know, it's so cringy. I, I created myself a headache even thinking about it because it's so, our world is in a space right now where we've convoluted everything so much that we've we've created smallness for ourselves in a way that we haven't realized it. And how we can see it is by looking out into the world and seeing what's out there and seeing how, how we see certain things shows up for us. Cause the, our reality is a direct reflection of the inside of our minds, how we think about things, the programs that we bought. So let's lean in a little further. So the last couple of things I wanted to talk about with the word free is free to me and I don't know about you and you can, you know, you can let me know this somehow free to me has expectations attached to it. Because if you say, I want to be free, I want to feel free. I want to, you know, experience free being free. What does that really mean for you? Like, right. And Jen's running the thing now. I owe you. Yeah. I owe you. So if you're going to give me something for free, then I owe you something. Or what, what would I like to give you? Like there's a, there's always a repercussion, an expectation with a free, like, like it has no value. So then you got to put value on it or you got to place value on it. And that's not 100% true. So let's lean into freedom. Okay. We're going to flip the side. So now we got all crunchy with free because it, it has so many things attached to it. What if we didn't have a monetary system? Let's lean into that. Okay. Before we get into freedom, what popped in my head was if we didn't have a monetary system that told us that there was a value on money and that you needed money in order to buy things, then how would we buy things? What an interesting question. How would we buy things or how would we get things if we had no value, like money, monetary thing placed on how would we get the things that we wanted? Um, how many times have you ever asked that question of yourself, right? Because I would imagine that right now your mind goes into a little bit of a spin thinking, I don't know how we wouldn't be able to buy anything at all if we didn't have money. And is that necessarily true? Because I know right now I'm looking outside at a garden that's just finished I mean, it's been cleaned out and I had all kinds of stuff in that garden that I could have given away for free to someone who could have made like say all the tomatoes tomato sauce and put it in a jar and we would have it for quite a long time now if I were a canner that would be something that I that I would do 
but my next door neighbor and I and whoever else I ran into would have all sorts of tomato sauce for the winter, right? Did that cost anything? Maybe aside from the jar, if you want to get you know technical with the jars, just say we already had the jars. So did I have to do anything or pay anything in order for that to occur? No, I didn't, right? So I could have sourced making tomato sauce for the winter and having that to you know, eat over the winter time. And it wouldn't have cost me anything except for the time and energy put into making some kind of tomato sauce or chili sauce or something. So what else in your world can you, can you think of that you can actually source by giving away what you have for free, right? So I know for sure that I had enough tomatoes to deliver to the whole block a few tomatoes each right at the end of the season because there are so many I still have a huge bucket and then that was like a long time ago I pulled all the green ones so I know that I had all kinds of things in my garden that I could have shared with my neighbors I know that um I was creating all kinds of um I bought some I had some flour I bought some flour so I was practicing making breads and things of that nature so there's all kind of stuff that I could have given away my neighbors could have had to eat so they would have sourced free does it mean that they wouldn't value it if I gave it away, right? I don't think that that's how they would feel because they're in my bubble. They would have appreciated it. But that's one aspect of when I start to look around and see what I have right now, if we just pulled the thread of a monetary system, like pulled the thread of the coin, having the power of me getting things that I want, what would be left, right? So everyone would be, you know, uh, you, giving away the things that they have an abundance of, right? So you would, your neighbors and friends, that close-knit area would be really supportive because you would start giving away the things that you have abundance of and they would be doing the same thing, which means we would all have a little bit of everything. And it wouldn't have had a cost to it except for your own joyful expression of creating whatever it is that you are going to give away. What if that's how you knew that your world was going to be all the time, right? What if you started, um, so I would make my garden bigger and plant more plants because I knew that my love of creating, growing tomatoes, maybe in peppers or whatever else I had out there and having them turned into, like turning them into tomato sauce and sharing them with my neighbors would be joyful for me and give me great joy inside and the freedom to be able to grow as many tomatoes as I wanted, create as much as I could from it, and then share it with all the love that I had with my neighbors. Free, right? Maybe my neighbors next door had other things that they created. Maybe we have a great baker on the street. Maybe we have someone who is a great, actually across the street, we have um, a, like someone who is a master seamstress. There, if I just looked down my street, I imagine that I would have everything that I needed for free. I, all I'd have to do is just walk up the street. I know there's a mechanic that lives down the street. I know that there's someone who sails next to me. So there's, you know, if I ever wanted to go on vacation or go for a, a trip, I would be, you know, free and open. He's invited, they've invited us many times. So I could source like the freedom of having a mini vacation or going out on the water on a sailboat, which I don't know how to do and trusting a master sailor. I would have someone down the street who could fix my car. I have someone, there's a teacher that lives down the street. There's all kinds of people that live in my vicinity that if I were to share the only thing that I'm great at, if it's only one thing, I would have an abundance of everything because my neighbors could do the same thing. So if we shift the way we see free and create an abundance mindset with the word free, what would our world look like, right? So now we're getting into the more like the, the, you know, more joyful, less heavy aspect of what is really truly available for us here. Because this is, I imagine, how they used to do it, you know, years ago, I would say, probably not quite even as long as ago as I'm imagining in my head. But right now, we can do that now, right? Not being um, too, like, ignorant about the fact that it's possible 
to create a space where we're uh, giving and receiving with the word free attached to it because it doesn't have a dollar sign attached to the item or the thing that we're delivering. So that's the free part. So shifting our perspective on, wow, how much value do we place on something based on our society? Move into the area of freedom now. Okay. What does freedom mean? Right. What does freedom mean to you? So when you look at when I look at the United States, the word freedom has a ton of value over there. Uh, and I say over there, I mean, like across the Detroit River right where I live, which isn't that far. But in that country, I, I, I experienced the American flag with freedom, right? Whatever freedoms they've attached to the American flag. And yet, do, do Americans really truly feel free right now, right? We're almost a year, three quarters of a year into a pandemic. And the rules are getting more defined, more defined, and more defined, and, and somewhat limiting in a million ways from Sunday. And are we creating more freedom, or is this our granular way of squeezing ourselves into the smallness of a, you know of our own nature? So freedom, I got a really cool acronym for freedom that I feel has a very uh, big impact on how we see what we give away as our gifts. Right. So when I attach the word free to something, I want it to be, you know what, my divine gifts are free. They were given to me energetically, which, you know, if I had to liken that to something, it's free. Like my love is free. My gifts, you know, internal gifts are free. My knowledge is free, although maybe I would have paid for the education. What I possess right now is free and I would freely give it away. Right. From that space. So what I got the acronym, here's the acronym for freedom for releasing ever evolving dormant omniscient miracles All right i'm going to say it again for releasing ever evolving dormant omniscient miracles is freedom so if we're releasing ever evolving ever evolving dormant omniscient miracles that means that we're experiencing freedom in a way that's creating miracles because we've let go of everything Right, we've let go of absolutely everything, and that is a miracle in itself. Right, if we're going to let go of everything, it doesn't mean that you have to like sleep in a box on the corner of the street, it means that we have attachments to things. Right, what are we attached to? Some of us are attached to attachment, right? It can get a little convoluted, but are you attached to your physical possessions? Are you attached to the title in your name? Are you attached to the education that you receive, the, the, maybe the letters after your name? Are you attached to your position in society? Are you attached to your gifts? Are you attached to not being free? Right, all these things are what we get to really dive deep in and see when you want freedom, it's one thing to say it and give lip service to the word freedom. It's another thing to actually see what that really means to you. Like I say, oh yeah, I want freedom. Great. What are you willing to do about it? <laughs> what are you willing to um, create in your reality that would cause you to experience the type of freedom that you're really truly after? Or are you fully in lip service to yourself? Because that's the only one that you're hurting, right? If you're pretending that freedom is what you're after, but you're not actually willing to go after it and have it. And if that means creating a safe space where you can open up to your neighbors and your friends and expand the bubble of who you're connected to in your community or in your society or in your city or town or state or province or even online. Online is like a community or city of itself, right? The tech world of our connections. Would you really truly be willing to create that space of freedom by giving away your the things that you are really great at so that others could read the benefits of that and would you be willing to receive without judgment for free gifts from others right super fascinating place to be like so fascinating that it, it almost pains me to say this in a way in this way but it feels as though we've been giving ourselves a lip service of freedom, wanting freedom, and striving for freedom by creating more rules for ourselves so that we are smaller and smaller and smaller. Almost doing the exact opposite, uh, 
than what we get to do in order to experience freedom. So let me tell you, let me see what Jen says. In business, we're taught that free isn't valued. Yeah, and the more you charge, the more value you deliver. 100% that came up for me this morning too is the reality of that. It's not even, it's not even like, untrue. It is true. The more you charge, the more someone feels like they're getting and the more focused they become and then with it and the more, the more value they place on it, the higher up the art, the, uh, what do I call the hierarchy it gets, the more value perceived value when you're charging in a business for something. So it's a fascinating place. This is like cracked open something so profound inside of me that it's even uh, a struggle to spit out the words for the difference because I speak internally to myself about the freedom that I'm after and I really truly don't know what that is. I'm human like everyone else. And until you're actually willing to look at what it means to you and then see the truth of those statements and then flip that into what's truly possible for you and making those changes in order to access that type of freedom, we will never know freedom like we crave it. So we're gonna slide right into our second break here. And when we come back, we're going to answer Jen's question. She wrote in the chat, how does that compare to offering free services? And man, I got a lot of insight on that. This topic is just fascinating. Wouldn't it be beautiful if it cracked open everybody else's minds in order to receive and give freely with the love and value that is truly possible on this planet. So let's roll into this second break here. You're listening to The Crossroads to Awakening and we're on the Inspired Choices Network. We get to be inspired. This gets to be inspiring. We'll be right back. If you could wave a magic wand and have your life be anything you wanted it to be, what would it look like? Professional dancer, CEO of a multi-million dollar earth conscious company, a screenwriter with top billing shows, and ultimately have the boldness to move about the world without emotional blocks standing in your way, therefore having the confidence to achieve anything you put your mind to. That's what Wendy Paquette knows is possible for you. The first step is understanding why you don't believe it too, or why you do, and yet haven't created it. Put on your possibility goggles and join Wendy now, because you're at the crossroads to awakening. This is the Crossroads to Awakening show with your host, Wendy Paquette. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Now back to the program. Okay, so let's go. Let's dive into Jen's question because she was asking before the break, how does that compare to offering free services? She says, I do a lot of free work and it brings me so much joy to use my gifts to help people. Yet I know that that's where uh, I know that charging money is the way of the world. And that's where I struggle because people also don't find value in themselves to invest in their healing. That's so true. I mean, the program runs deep. It really, really does. It runs so deep because we are in the space where the big value is placed on big money, big dollars. And when someone's not willing to pay big dollars, here's the program, when they're not willing to pay big dollars for their own healing or their own transformation, they're not valuing A, themselves very highly, and B, um, they've placed a value so high on your work that the incongruency of that creates a massive gap there. And that's where all their programs lie. That's what they get to shift for themselves. But it puts people also in the space of scarcity and lack, right? Because suddenly they're not able to have something that others have because of the price, based on the price. So what if everything's free? If you were offering services that were free, what that would say in this reality right now, the programs that we're running is that there's not a lot of value in it because it's free. And so a, you're gonna have some people that choose it because it's free and then potentially claim that it doesn't work, right? Because it's free. And so therefore in the back of their minds, their programs may run that if it's free, it doesn't have any value. So therefore it's does, it doesn't work. And then you're gonna have people who are so conditioned to look for free that they're just collector of free stuff, almost like hoarding lack, right? I'm gonna collect all these things, right? Cause they're free. I don't really need them. I might not even really want them, but because they're through, I'm going to collect them. Right? So I have things. 
And that's the space of like scarcity and lack where you're not really getting anything out of them either. Like they're not having some kind of transformation or healing because that's a whole new program. So how would we then look at this? Well, A, and my nose is running because I'm hitting on stuff here that's bringing and clearing. And I imagine through our, I don't even know where I have my Kleenex at, through our, um, through our programs, whoever's listening to this has probably got a lot of this stuff coming up because that's what I'm experiencing an irritation in a nose run, which means something is in the way. And I don't even know where, where I would hold this Kleenex. Oh, I have one. Let me slide to the side while I keep talking. So when you're running a program that says that you're going to receive a free item or a free session, what you're really saying to someone is, A, either it's not worth anything, so I'm not going to charge for it, or B, um, you're going to try it and I'm going to decide if you're worthy of buying something from me, right? So you're assessing from both sides. The person who's getting it for free and the person who's offering it free are both looking at it from two different perspectives. The whole thing itself is on one plane of thinking, right? It would take the person who wanted it for free to want it so bad that you would get to enroll them into something that was actually a paying product in order for them to actually truly receive their own breakthrough in in that they get to have more value and that they are more valuable or they have value. And you would get to be in the space of potentially I'm not valuing my own product. So I'm going to put it out there for free and see if anybody gets, see if anybody gets it. If we have any success with it, imagine that if you're the person goes, well, you know what? I don't know if this actually works and I want to know that it works. So I'm going to put it out there for free and test it out. What are you really trying to say to yourself? Right? A, I don't believe in myself yet. I haven't done this yet. I'm just experimenting. And I'm going to align with someone who wants something for free, who may or may not even put their whole selves into it. So you're going to align up perfectly with the people that you're resonating with because your belief in self isn't valued by you. Like you don't have your own value. You haven't created your own value. You haven't bought into your own value. You haven't even created a program that has value for what you're offering. So why would someone pay for it? If you're not willing to add value to it, they're not going to add value to it either, right? So it's a very convoluted space of programs. It really makes my mind crunchy that way because there's so much value in the world. If there's so much value in the world, then what parts of free have like how can we see the parts that are, that people are giving for free out of the kindness of their heart have massive value? And how can we receive that? How? Because we get to own our value no matter what. And we get to read the people that we are receiving from. Where are they at? We're at an age now where everybody can read everyone. Whether you do or you don't, that is a choice you're making. But we are in a space of transparency where we're coming into this opportunity to be so transparent that if you're willing to say something that's not actually true somebody else is going to see it and if they don't say it then you don't get to receive that feedback but you're still being it out in the world right so the transparency of where we're going where we're headed in our communities in our society just energetically alone is going to create a, a clear viewpoint of your programs Right. So when we step into that nature, we're going to be able to see someone who's offering something for free. So if I said, I'm going to give away for free one of my top of the line programs, it's worth $20,000 US, I'm going to give it away for free. Does that mean that you're going to look at that program as it has no value? Or are you going to look at it like, wow, how do I get that? Right. However, you respond to that statement is where your programs lie. Because if you only want it because it's free and you're like, oh, I'm going to collect that but not do anything, that's one thing. If you're like, oh my goodness, I know the value of that. I'm having that because it's, you know, it's, I can, I can pay free and what an opportunity. That's another thing, right? You're getting there. And then there's a, you know what, I can pay for it. And if it's offered to me for free and I can have it, I will take it based on face value of, I know exactly what that's worth because I know what I'm worth and I'm jumping in right? Something completely different. You know why? Because I value that program, whether it's worth nothing, I place a zero value or a 20K value on it. I know what it's worth. 
And so you're going to have the point of view yourself. Oh man. Like imagine this, if you knew that my 20 K program was something that you really, really wanted. And I decided to give it to you. Do you think that you would have something come up in your brain that said, I don't know if I'm worthy of that. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know if I, what, what if I get in there and the people that are in that program are like, God, they're way up here and I'm way down here and they're going to notice a difference. You see where I'm going with this? The value resides in here, right? So free now has a completely different aspect. Now you're seeing programs that you didn't know you even had. I'm going to offer you something that you've always wanted. And now you're going to judge yourself based on that value, right? Super convoluted. So where we get to go in this program, where I say in this program, in this episode is, oh man, find your, your transparent truth for yourself using the words free and freedom. Write down everything that comes up for you when you look at an item that's going to be given to you for free from a neighbor that you know, like, and trust. Write down everything that comes up for you when you're going to be giving something free from someone you have never met before that just some stranger out in the world is gonna give you the same thing that the neighbor that you know, like and trust is gonna give you. What comes up for you? Write that all down. Then look at the things that have a high cost and call it like a program or, or something, even a car. Can you imagine it, whatever neighborhood you live in? Let's imagine that you live in a neighborhood where you got like maybe there, I don't know what could be like around my neighborhood and we got, you know, maybe BMW, not BMWs, uh, uh, what do you call Volkswagens and maybe there's some trucks and there's, you know, it's mid-range cars. If I came driving home in a Bentley, what would come up for me, do you think? Right, imagine yourself, like whatever, whatever range of cars in your area, I don't even know. I'm just like, I'm thinking, do I even know what kind of cars they drive? I'm pulling myself into that space now. Uh, because I have no point of view around it. And imagine that if you did, right, if you placed value on those things and such things as a car and your whole street was safe filled with, uh, you know, I, I, let's use, let's use Volkswagens or something because they're kind of mid range in that area. And you came home with a Bentley. What do you think your neighbors would think of you? And what would you feel? How would you feel about that? Where would you go in your head? that would cause you to like judge yourself and or others based on your, the value that's placed on a car that's worth, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars. So you get to practice, practice seeing where the possibility of your freedom is taken away by the programs that are in your brain. What if those programs could be shifted and you didn't have those programs anymore and you could just live from the space of possibility and opportunity and, You could give your gifts for free and have people value them as though they were worth a million dollars because that's where we get to go as a society. Not because a million dollars is all the ultimate amount of money that we want, but because it's so valuable that we would place that dollar on it because it's so valuable. And yet it it is free, free to you, right? So I think I was speaking about the last, uh, in the last episode is your love is free right? You get to give as much love as you want. You still have it. Now here, here, this is what is bringing up for me in this very moment. When I was like bouncing this stuff off my husband this morning and I was, we we're talking right into this. And I said, what are my points of view around giving my gifts away for free? The immediate thought for me was like, I was out of blank, like, mm, I'm not hundred percent sure. He was pointing out to me, showing me like, okay, if you have a pen and you're going to give away that only, you only have one purple pen or one blue pen and you're going to give it away, then literally you're giving it away because you won't have that pen anymore. But if you possess something that's within you and you give it away, does that mean it's gone or are you infinitely supplied with that possibility? Like love, right? If you gave away love, do you have no more love left? No, you have an infinite supply. In fact, the more love you give, it most likely expands inside of you to give more. What about the gifts that you possess with healing? Like Jen, we can speak right into that. What if you you gave it away from the space of it's so valuable, I'm just going to give it away because everybody gets to have it, right? Do you no longer have that ability to heal because you're giving it away? Or have you compartmentalized your capacity to support others with healing and you're unsure at its value? 
if you gave it away, do you even know, like, would they even receive it because you haven't quite given it the value that it deserves? So many juicy thoughts around this, right? Because what if the whole world decided to give the whole world all of its gifts, right? Each and every one of us decided we're going to give each other all that we have so that we can all grow and flourish, right? And live abundantly in this reality. What would happen to our world as we know it, right? What would happen? It would be insane. It would be so much fun, I believe. I get We get to play in that space of imagination where intelligence and creativity are having fun in that space where anything is truly possible and pull in those possibilities where we can create this massively abundant world where all of our gifts are distributed everywhere. And we're also receiving at the same time because if everyone's pumping out all their, their beautiful gifts, their infinite gifts to each other, then we all possess all that we need in order to thrive in this reality in a different way. So we're going to go into our next break, which is our last break. And uh, when we come back, we'll, we'll just button up this whole free and freedom thing, right? It was so heavy. I actually created myself a headache before. And it was only in, in that the programs that are so ingrained in our society that we get to shift them and we get to shift them together. Because as we talk about this and we open up the spaces in our mind that sees possibility beyond what we're actually looking at, we have the capacity to change the world, right? What is that statement they always say? Uh, one, it's as crazy, the, changing the world is as crazy as the one person who decides to say it, be it, and do it, right? Then become it. So let's step into our final break and we'll get on with this conversation and we'll button it to the space where we can have everything we've wanted and then some by cracking open our minds to see a different perspective within the realms of free and freedom. Perhaps now you might charge a little bit for your programs or you'll decide you're going to reduce your programs if you're a business or you know a coach out in the world based on your space of being so that you could see your value and others can see it too because what would be really funny if you sourced all new clients based on the fact that A, you decided to not charge for a month, you're just going to source clients and change their lives and watch what happened after that. I wonder, I wonder what abundance would get created if we did it from a space of transparent understanding, not from, I'm just going to whip it out there, give myself lip service, and, lip service and hope that it happens. But if you actually got yourself to the space where you knew how valuable your stuff was and you were willing to give it away for free because it would expand you and others at the same time. I don't know. It's a thought. Yet we still in a world that live in a world that's based on a monetary system. So let's walk into the break and we will be right back. If you could wave a magic wand and have your life be anything you wanted it to be, what would it look like? Professional dancer, CEO of a multi-million dollar earth conscious company, a screenwriter with top billing shows, and ultimately have the boldness to move about the world without emotional blocks standing in your way therefore having the confidence to achieve anything you put your mind to. That's what Wendy Paquette knows is possible for you. The first step is understanding why you don't believe it too, or why you do, and yet haven't created it. Put on your possibility goggles and join Wendy now, because you're at the Crossroads to Awakening. This is the Crossroads to Awakening show with your host, Wendy Paquette. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspirechoicesnetwork.com. Now back to the program. Okay, everybody. I feel as though we've opened some space up and Jen says that in there too, so much more space. Yeah, because the headache that I created before the show based on how crunchy it was all being is pretty much gone because we allowed ourselves to open up to what's truly possible if we were to really be clean and clear with ourselves and transparent in where we're at in society with ourselves. What does it look like for us and how do we see ourselves and others based on those two words, free and freedom, right? What comes up in that way for you? Is that free expectations or, you know, you get to lean in yourself and really journal it out. That's the only thing that I know for sure. When I write everything down and get it out of my brain and onto a piece of paper that I'm able, that I'm free to receive more. There you go. There's that word already. I'm free to receive more information 
from the ethers, from the energies, from the source, when I get that stuff out of my brain and onto a piece of paper so that I can keep channeling through more information of what's truly possible, right? So write it all out. Ask yourself those questions, right? How do I really see the world? How do I value the world? How do, if you're a business person or a coach, how do I value my services and how do I feel others value them, right? What would happen? Ask yourself the question, what would happen if I gave away my services for free? Would I feel like I was undervaluing myself? Would I feel like maybe my, you know, my program has no value? Maybe I just put it out there. How about this? You know, it's coming to my mind. How many coaches do you know? Or people with a business or a service online put up their product or service or coaching opportunity online. They start telling people about it and no one comes. How many times I've heard that many, many times. No one shows up. No one wants to enroll. No one wants to coach with them. Why? Perhaps they get to look into, or we, I say we, because we are all, you know, one in the space. We get to look at, gosh, how do I value it? What value do I see in my own program? What value do I see in my own practice? What am I actually willing to give away of myself in my program that would change someone's life that they would be willing to pay for it. And where's the certainty in myself that that's truly what I'm creating in this world, right? You guys, this is a value conversation as well, right? Who knew that's where it's going to go? The difference between free and freedom, free as a way of being free as a, uh, you know, a dollar value and freedom also as an experience and a way of being free, right? So much is intertwined together with those two words that if you dump it all out onto paper and then keep asking yourself the question like and then what do I feel about it right and then what do I know about freedom and then how do I feel about you know offering my programs or my coaching for free what comes up for you the only way to know is to ask yourself those questions to be 100% honest and transparent as what it really would create for you Maybe it's not even made for you to do that. Maybe you're doing what another coach has told you to do. You're just following the robot way. You know what? I'm really, you know, an artist who paints, but what I'm going to do is over here, I'm going to lean into coaching because that's what everybody else is doing. And that's how I'm going to make money. And if that's how I got to make money, I'm going to follow the, you know, A to Z system. And I'm going to put a program up and I'm going to put a dollar value on it. You hear what I'm saying? You're not valuing it. You're not valuing what you're creating if you're just doing it to generate money in the monetary system. Then you're judging it in you based on the fact that no one's coming, showing up to buy it. You've not placed value on it from the beginning because maybe your heart is in being an artist. And what would that create for you if you actually leaned in that direction, right? Artists give their stuff away for free all the time. Why? Sometimes starving, the starving artist is a thing. They bought that program and maybe others have bought that program, but they're doing what's passionate in their lives. And if someone offered to pay them, they have their own set of programs, right? That might not allow it, but let me tell you something. They are blissful as the day is long sometimes because they're doing what they find valuable from their heart source in that space, right? A little bit of program deleting the fact that they could receive money for their work would change everything. And where are you? at in this world right now with the word free and freedom. What do you really, really want in that space? And do you even want freedom? Are you craving it? Are you desiring it? Or is your heart calling for it? Or are you free? Are you feeling free in your world, in your relationship, in your relationship to money or God or yourself? When you look in the mirror, only you can ask yourself those questions and answer them with the truest honesty on the planet because you get to listen to you and where you're at. And when you discover your programs, you get to rewrite them. Rewrite those programs so that you get to be free and even amplify all that's in your life to an abundant space over scarcity and lack, right? From pretending that freedom or free is the thing and really underneath of it all, not believing a damn word of it. So you get to go there. Well, if you stuck with me through this whole show, kudos to you, right? Reach out to me on Facebook and I will gift you a free 20 minute conversation into what this looks like for you and where you're at, because it's truly the space of growth and transformation.
if you were willing to stick out this heavy thing for so long. So we're at the end of the show. I am so grateful for your presence, your energy, your honesty, and the ability to stick with me all this time. I love you so much. Next week, we're going to start figuring all this shit out. See you later. Thank you for choosing to listen to the Crossroads to Awakening radio show. Wendy Pocket will return next Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We look forward to you joining us again. Until then, enjoy your journey and we'll meet you at the crossroads.